looking at the word biology, and before taking a dive into the world of biology, we really have to take a step back and ask ourselves, well, what is biology? And like most words in science, we can simply look at roots, suffixes, and prefixes to get a better understanding of what we're dealing with. In this case, we have the root bio, meaning life, and the suffix ology, or the study of. If we put it all together, biology is simply put, the study of life. But that's when a different sort of question really comes in. Life is a pretty vague word, so what exactly is life? That's a question researchers and scientists have had to come up with. Is there any way to determine what exactly is life? And with this question in mind, scientists and researchers have had to go through the analysis of many organisms on our planet, including animals, plants, and protists, all the way to bacteria. And through a way of determination, from extensive comparisons and research, the community has come up with seven characteristics of life. These characteristics are used to determine whether something is living or not. But what exactly are these characteristics? Well, let's take a look. The first characteristic of life is that all living things are made up of cells. Every single one of them, all living things are made up of cells. Secondly, is that all living things reproduce. Third, is that all living things have a universal genetic code. Next, all living things grow and develop. They all use and obtain energy. Sixth is that all living things respond to stimuli or in some cases, we also use the word environment. And lastly, is that all living things maintain homeostasis. But before we get too ahead of ourselves, let's take a look at each individual characteristic of life. Starting off with the very first one, with living things are made of cells. Take a look at yourself or even a human body. If you zoom in with a microscope, you can see that we are in fact made up of trillions of tiny cells. These cells are extremely complex in their own way, with individual processes that carry out different actions. More than that, we can also thank two main scientists for piloting the idea of cells being key to life. The first is Theodore Schwann, who procured the idea that all animals were made of cells. And then Matthias Schleiden, who found out that all plants were made out of cells. From their combined work in cell theory, these two scientists have connected their findings to come up with the first characteristic of life. Moving on, the second characteristic of life is that all living things reproduce. Many scientists use reproduce and passing on genetic information interchangeably for this characteristic, but both really do work. Let's take a look at humans again in this case. You get genetic information from both of your parents, which overall give you your physical characteristics. But humans aren't the only case. Seeds also have genetic information from their parent plant, which is why many seeds produce plants that closely resemble their parents. Even bacteria reproduce through binary fission, creating two identical cells from the genes from the parent passed on. As we go to the next characteristic of life, we can see that all living things contain what we call the universal genetic code. What is that code? 
Well, it's nothing but deoxyribonucleic acid, also known as DNA. This DNA is present within all of our cells, which can really go back and tie within the first characteristic. But an important thing about DNA is that it can determine what we call phenotypes, or our physical features and how we look, as well as other internal body bodily functions. DNA also codes for our proteins, things like antibodies and enzymes, something that we will get into in a future episode. Moving on, we now have the fourth characteristic of life. All living things grow and develop. Think about it. From infancy all the way up to late adulthood to even when you grow old, you will always be growing and changing. Your muscles continue to develop and even your bones get stronger as you gain nutrients such as calcium. All of this happens over the course of time. In fact, it's not only humans that grow and develop. In fact, let's just take a look at plants. Starting off as seeds, they also grow roots and they grow leaves. Bacteria as well grow, as they take in nutrients and material, and they also look to develop immunities as well, coming internally. All living things change over time, and they all grow and develop. We're almost there, just a couple more to go. The third to last characteristic of life is that living things use and obtain energy. Us humans love to obtain energy in the form of food. We eat to obtain energy. That apple you eat is taken in as a chemical energy held in the bonds of its sugars. But it's not only sugars, but also other artificial sweeteners can also give us a boost of energy as well, even if it's short term. But Even as we obtain energy, we use energy as well. When we walk or run, we use energy. In this case, it's mechanical energy. And even when we sleep, our brain needs energy to function, making the need to obtain energy and as well as use it extremely vital to our human body. Another extremely important characteristic of life is the responsiveness to stimuli. Stimuli is also interchanged with environment, but really it's any external happening that we respond to. Let's just say we have a pot, a hot pot on a stove, a pot that's heated up. When we touch the pot, we move away from that stimulus. Because it's too hot, our fingers or our body moves away from it. The same thing goes for example, a hot sun where instead of staying in the sun and heat, we look to find shade or a cooler area. Plants also do this in quite wondrous ways. In what is known as phototropism, plants actually grow toward a light source, even if that means bending or twisting around. And on to the last and arguably the most important characteristic of life, the ability to maintain homeostasis. Before we go any further, let's break it down into its roots. Homeo and stasis. Homeo is essentially maintaining or balancing. And on the other hand, stasis is nothing but, well, state. Putting that all together, homeostasis is nothing but the maintaining of an internally balanced state. And we have these in many of the situations we see almost every day. Think about a time you were thirsty. Of course, what would you need? Well, you would need water. Why is this? Well, it's because your tissues need water, of course, and your body has to regulate the flow of water inside your body 
to the outside environment and vice versa. So when you feel thirsty, you instantly go get a drink from a fridge to maintain the internally balanced state. You do this to maintain the correct balance of liquids in your body. And in fact, plants do this as well. When there is, for example, a lack of water, plants close the stomata in their leaves so that water can't escape and make efforts to get water from the ground. We call this maintenance of water in our system osmoregulation, but really other internal processes are regulated as well, such as internal body temperature. So on a final note, even after looking at all of these characteristics in detail, it's important to point out that all of these characteristics need to be met in order to truly understand or truly conclude that an organism is living or not. All of these need to be true. And with that, we've truly understood an introduction to biology.